Our pregame show is presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Welcome to Shawnee High School. Evan Skilleter and Scott Mag with you, and we're about set for kickoff. And Scott, two teams, just one win apiece, but a lot of times when, when teams like this go up against each other, we see a lot of at least good aggressive football. What are you anticipating yeah, today? Yeah, absolutely. You know, both teams are, you know, um, Titans last week were close. Uh, they have been the last couple weeks. Shawnee's been really close too in the games. It's just a couple guys trying to make plays. Maybe it's a penalty. Maybe it's a false start. Maybe it's something. It's a couple guys um, trying to make a play for their team because they're both kind of frustrated because they're not getting the wins like you mentioned. They got both are one one win. They're really trying really hard. Um, I'm looking for whoever makes the most plays. Obviously, it's kind of cliche, but whoever makes plus, most plays wins tonight and and doesn't have as many as the mistakes as the other team. And that is your pregame show, sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. As we are underway, this kick down to the four-yard line. It will be returned by the Shawnee Indians wearing those black uniforms. And that is Christ Christian Jones returning that kick across the 20-yard line up near the 25. And that's where Shawnee will take over, a team that lost their starting quarterback early in the year. They kind of went from an under-center team, a, a team that likes to run the ball, to more of a shotgun team. So it'll be interesting to see how the Indians do here as they begin this game on offense. Yeah, and, and the Titans have really handled this spread formation type teams so far this year. The, the problem is, is you know, they, they're, they're one or two plays short of coming up on top. So we'll see what happens. That's Chase Beery, the quarterback, handing it off. And a nice play for Shawnee to start this game as the Indians take it up near the 33-yard line. That was carried by Jordan Banks. Yeah, and Jordan has a little bit of speed. I know, I think he's a track athlete. So, you know, they want to get him in space. Um, Titans <coughs> did a pretty good job of keeping him inside, not letting him get outside. And then the safety, um, Metzger, came there and cleaned it up. It's a gain of nine, second down one for the Indians. Man in motion, that's Keegan Wilson. Wilson, they actually fake it to Wilson, and Beery takes it up the middle, and that's good for a Dales Concrete first down. Yeah, that's a great job. <clears throat> They've kind of went to that jet sweep a little bit, and then they, they fake that handoff, and then they went up, up the middle with the quarterback keeper, uh, trying to keep the Titans... Kind of the guys up in the middle, kind of keep them at home so they don't follow that jet sweep. And then, you know, they keep pounding up the middle. Then maybe they get the jet sweep for the guy on the outside. I just want to get their athletes in space. Ball up to the 40-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. Wilson, or excuse me, Beery bounces outside and gets back to the line of scrimmage. But that's it. We'll have a second down and 10 coming up. Great job by Grant Schrader to handle the block and then discard the block and then get to the quarterback for make that no gain. Good job by him of keeping that ball, not letting the quarterback get outside. Good job by him to take on the block and then discard the block and make the tackle. Good job by Grant Schrader. Second down 10, two wide receivers split out to the left side. Beery rolling that way, looking to pass. Nowhere to go, still looking and now just tosses it out of bounds. Good play there as yeah. he got rid of it just before stepping out. Yeah, he had, just as Pope came from his linebacker position, kind of booked up the middle there and, and, and flushed him out of the pocket. And then he was running for his life as the, the host of Titans were chasing him down. And good heady heads played for him just to kind of flip that off to the sideline because otherwise it would have been a four or five yard loss. Instead of that five yard loss, it's third down 10. Yeah, and you know, Shawnee, most of their offense has come from from the run this year. So, you know, this these long distance uh, downs is going to bode well for the Titans. Kind of that's what they want to do tonight. Get them in long, third and long. Beery wants to pass, trying to get rid of a man. He does. He throws. Tipped up in the oh. air, and three, three. Titans <laughs> touch it before it hits the turf. Yeah, Metzger tipped it, and then Dueling was there. And then last but not least, uh, um, Jordan Metzger. <laughs> Metzger tipped it the dueling then almost to his brother, Jordan Metzger there. So a fourth down and 10 as Sewell comes out to punt this one away. That's Shandon Sewell. Grant Schrader back, as well as Landon Mormon. 
This one kicked away, nice high kick, and a fair catch called for at the 30, or excuse me, the 26 yard line. And that was caught by Landon Mormon. So now the Titans offense comes onto the field and very similarly to what we just said, they've lost their starting quarterback and they're a team that is trying to find their rhythm offensively. Yeah, and, and a lot of these guys, as, as uh, anybody that hasn't watched the Titans know, that there's a lot of guys out here playing for the first time Friday, on Friday nights this year so far. So they're trying to work out the kinks and trying to find out who they are. I think they've gotten, it, they've gotten better, but unfortunately for the Titans, so is everybody else that they've played. It looks like Shawnee goes early, certainly yeah. a penalty, and they do signal the first call of the game against Shawnee. And tonight's first call is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're bu building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. And good, uh, good job by Peyton Kuman there, the quarterback. Uh, last week, the team that Sol Solana was getting off on the line of scrimmage pretty quick, and that's a good adjustment for him this week to uh, change his cadence. And that was Grant Schrader who received the, uh, what do you call that, the jet, jet sweep, sweep pass. Yes, mm -hmm. Whatever it was, it went for a big loss, six-yard yeah. loss as Shawnee gets those penalty yards back yeah. and then one. Yeah, great. Yeah, it was a great job by the right defensive end, uh, Carter Fay, who was the guy that jumped off sides, and he got them yards back and then some there on his great getting up the field and then not letting the jet sweep come to his side and took him down. Titans back to work on second and 11. They split three wide receivers out left. Looking to pass is Kuhlman, and he throws. That's complete. Way to squeeze that yeah, one in there. Sure did. Cy Rump grabs it, and it's enough for the Dales Concrete first down. Yeah, for those of us watching it maybe for the first time, Peyton kind of sidearm slings it, right? He, but he does get rid of it quickly. And he does put some pace on the ball. He did a great job of side kind of went down. Shawnee played his zone, got in a soft spot in his zone, stopped, turned around. Peyton Coombe put it right on between the one and the two. And good job by side to catch it and get up the field. Ball up to the Titan 41-yard line. They flip the formation, put three wide receivers out to the right side. Cy Rump in the backfield to the left of Kuman. And they'll give that to Rump. He cuts up field. Looking for space, doesn't find any as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Good job by the defensive lineman up there to get up field and make side, not letting him get outside, turn it back in where all of his po their po their, the posse was and, and tackled him for no gain there. Titans ball like the tackler. Yeah, and Titans kind of struggled a little bit last week in running the football, and I think a lot of teams, they're, the way they've beaten the Titans is – they make them throw the ball, you know, take away the run. Titans really kind of want to run at first, pass second. But in the last couple of weeks, a lot of teams are making Titans do the opposite. And they give it to Rump. A flag comes out sitting at the 40-yard line right in the area of holding. holding. Yeah, I think so. Rump picks yeah. up two yards, maybe three, but I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, that might – I don't know if – Kind of a little, like, misdirection counter play there. The Titans were kind of running, trying to – you know, because of their penetration, trying to get them to over pursuit and cut back behind it. But one of the linemen's got a little bit too much of the jersey and they called a 10 yard holding penalty. Sets them back 11 yards. The penalty occurred one yard behind the line of scrimmage. So it's second down second 21. 21, yep. Kuhlman wants to pass, it'll come back route, and it's short of its yep. target and incomplete intended for Jordan Metzger. Peyton Kuhlman had to kind of get away, he kind of was sidestepping away from the penetration because the line, the, the rush was coming in from his right side, so he's kind of backpedaling, and then he's seen Jordan Metzger open and tried to throw that off his back foot, and then for it was a little bit short. And Jordan tried to do a good job of diving for it, but to no avail. That brings up third and a long 21 yards. Titans split three wide receivers out to the left side. Rump lined up right behind Kuhlman. And they'll run a delayed handoff as Rump gets up the field for a couple, but not nearly enough. And a punting situation here for the Titans. Yeah, a little delay, as you mentioned. And uh, Shawnee was, had that read perfectly. And... Made a great tackle to make that only a five-yard gain. 
So both teams, you know, their offense got a little bit gone, had a penalty, a miscue, kind of set them back. And then, you know, when they're playing third and long, second and long, that's not how both of these offenses have been built this year. And that's why they've kind of struggled to put wins on the board. Kick is away, bounces at the 32-yard line. And like you said, both possessions very similar to each other. You look at stat, stats on these two teams, they're very similar in yeah. terms of statistical output. They are similar in record. They're similar in terms of common opponents. Both teams yeah. won in six this season. I mean, the, the similarities are, are endless for these right. two. And, and both teams have, you know, may have eked out another win here or there, but one or two plays is the difference of them winning three games or four games instead of one. And, you know, it's it, just like what we had there, a lineman trying to make a play grabs a little bit extra jersey and costs them 10 yards. You know, it's, it, the good thing is you're seeing a lot of effort of both these teams. Being one and six, uh, they're still playing hard and trying to win for their, for their team. Indians hand this one off. That's Jordan Banks, Banks and Banks great play. makes a couple guys miss. Not much of a gain, but still a great play from Banks. You're right, great play by Banks, but a better play, I think, from Landon Mormon coming from the safety spot to come flying up there and make the shoestring tackle. Because you know, if he misses that, Banks might still be running into the end zone. We might be hearing the band play. It's a pickup of four, second down six here. Ball on the 17-yard line, make it the 18. Two wide receivers split out right. One goes in motion, that's Banks. And they hand this off to the back and still on his feet. Yeah, but nowhere to go. Right, his bunch of guys teeing off on him, but I don't know who was it that shot up that middle. I, I think it may be Justice Pope. I don't know. Somebody came up the middle and really plugged that hole quickly. And uh, Banks had nowhere to go. Maybe gained a yard there trying to get away from that shoestring tackle. And, you know, that's kind of dangerous when you're in the middle of a pile and you let those big guys come there and tee off on you. It was number seven on the carry. Number seven's listed as Dominic Lynch. But I believe that's the one that got hurt earlier this year. I'll have yeah. to check on that as Shawnee runs a swing pass out to the left side. And they pick up a Dale's Concrete first down. Jordan Banks again. Very hard to see these numbers in the black jersey and the red. It, you know, you think that that would be very good contrasting numbers from up here and being dark. It just kind of fades right in. It's just hard to hard to see those numbers, especially it might be my old eyes too no, uh, coming I have, into play I've got there. Younger <laughs> eyes than you and still struggling. So don't feel badly. First down, ten for the Indians. Beery takes the snap. He'll hand this one off again. It's. Number seven, I'll try to listen to the PA announcer here, but a good pickup. It's Zach Noonan, the carrier. Wearing his buddy Dominic Lynch's jersey. Yeah, and Shawnee's doing a lot of, you know, trying to confuse the Titans with a lot of motions, a lot of miss handoff, misdirection type stuff to try to get the Titans to over pursuit and then cut behind it. See if Titans can uh, figure this out here. Beery will keep this one, looking for some space on the right side, and has about three yards, which is plenty for the Dales Concrete first down. Yeah. Scoreboard still reads 0-0, 423 left in the first quarter, and that scoreboard today sponsored by Structure Outdoor by Alts. Good job by Cy Rump to come there and read that one, come up there and make that tackle. Ball at the 43. It's got to be very confusing here for the Titans because there's so much misdirection, so much motion in what they got. Oh, great play. That's, That's Austin Smith's. Moss getting oh, back Austin there. Yep. Noonan, the ball carrier, he loses two yards on the play. Good job by Moss to come from his defensive uh uh, tackle position there to shed the blocker and standing waiting right for the the runner. He just picked him up and threw him down. And correction, just a loss of one, so second down 11 here. That's great probably for an offensive lineman when you're standing there and the guy comes right at you and like your eyes get really big and said, thank you very much, I don't have to run <laughs> to get this guy. 
Indians looking to pass this time as they throw it back to the wide receiver, the running back, excuse popped me. The up. ball popped out, and they're going to say incomplete. They tried to set up that little screen pass to the left side, little misdirection to the right. Yeah, and Rump read that one well, and then all of a sudden Ryan Ross comes up from his cornerback position and pop that one out. Because uh, Rump, <laughs> Rump was – he had thought it in his crosshair, so did I. I thought he was going to pick that off, and then it just got over the, his reach, and Ryan Ross came in and popped it out of the uh, would-be receiver's hands. I can't, didn't see the number that it was thrown to. Third down, 11. Two wide receivers again split out to the right side. Beery rolling that way. Beery still wants to throw. Beery can't find anyone, now just throws it away, and that's going to bring up another punting situation for the Indians. You just kind of can t you tell Barry was not really that comfortable when he was coming out there trying to find, trying to find somebody and, you know, nothing there. Again, he made the right decision for the second time in the row or second time in the consecutive drives of getting to the sideline and throwing it away and not eating the five or six yard sack. Sewell back in to punt, standing at his own 28 yard line. Nice high kick. Yes. And it bounces out the 29 and takes an Indians hop back a few yards. Good effort, I suppose, there by number 20, Carter Fay, jumping on the ball. Yeah. Landon Mormon's trying to fair catch it, but him and Fay kind of tangled a little bit, and Mormon just kept on running to get out of the way, so that ball didn't hit him. Good heads-up play by him. Yeah, sometimes those high kicks yeah. can be tough to, to grab, and it's better just get out of the way. Don't Absolutely. make an issue or don't make an error. Yeah. So the ball will be spotted at the 25-yard line. Titans offense back to work. That was a great punt. Like you said, mentioned it was really high and allowed the, the punt coverage team to get down there and, and then down it there at the 25-yard line. Kuman has rump to his left. And he's going to keep it. Throws over the top and a nice grab. And that might be a score as Carter Dueling is off to the races, crosses the 20. Crosses the 10, and he is into the end zone. Yeah, How about that? The Indians yeah. were in coverage, but instead of grabbing him, just kind of shoved him in the back, which propelled that long touchdown of 75 yards. Yeah. And, and it looked kind of like, maybe like they, they had man on this side of the of the field and, and zone on the other side, and, and uh, what a great play call to run the little slant by Carter Dooling. And Peyton hit him in stride, and uh, Carter Dooling knew what to do when he got the open green. He knew to run away from the guys and get himself into the end zone. That's a huge play for the Titans. Tyler Honebrink on for the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. So we have our first score on the Structure Outdoor scoreboard. It's 7-0. Ottawa Glandorf here in Shawnee as we step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And on that scoreboard, it's 7-0. Ottawa Glandorf on top after a 75-yard touchdown catch by Carter Dueling. Yeah, it's you know, good for the Titans young guys to get some confidence and look up there and you're winning. Oh, almost. Now the Indians with a chance yes. to return one deep. Christian Jones down the left side. And Jones takes it into Titan territory. Good field position for Shawnee to start this drive. Yeah, Jones, I tell you, he just sees some daylight and he's gone. That, that's great acceleration by that young man. And you can see why they want to run him and some of these other guys in those jet sweeps. They get them on the outside and use those speed and they know what to do when they see green, green fake grass in front of them. <laughs> It's a great field surface here at Shawnee. It's beautiful from up here. Brand new turf this year, paid for by the community. They just raised money. The boosters did such a nice job. So Shawnee, first and 10, ball all the way up to the Titan 40-yard line. Ooh. High snap. Yeah. Beery's going to have to keep this one. I'm not sure if he wanted to hand it off or not as he's tripped up. It goes for about six yards. Landon Moore came in, took, <laughs> took Barry's feet out, and he went flying from another three yards. It was, you know, maybe he's running so fast, and he just propels himself. He went airborne. 
No question about it. Yeah. Picks up six, second down four. Beery takes the snap. He'll hand this one. Noonan gets up to the 30, and they do say it's a Dales Concrete first down. Yep. Under two minutes to play now in the first quarter. Yeah, first down for the Indians. They're still going with that misdirection motion, fake and handoff. I don't think they've had one just straight handoff without any motion yet this game. They'll hand this one off to the man in motion. This time it's Jordan Banks, and Banks picks up enough for another Dales Concrete first down. So he gets up to the 19. Yeah. And, you know, with this motion and trying to get outside, you got to give those offensive line guys some credit because they got to be quick enough and athletic enough to get outside and make their blocks. And, one, don't get a holding, don't get a clip. So, you know, you, you, you all the, the running backs get all the glory and all the fame, but the guys that are getting out there and making the blocks are those athletic big guys up front that normally uh, don't get any recognition. And the Titans didn't like what they saw as they take a timeout with 128 on the clock. They'll step aside as well. 7 nothing. Titans on top. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. Call them for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Welcome you back for a Dale's Concrete first down. The Indians fake the handoff. Quarterback Beery keeps it and gets across the 10 yard line. And Shawnee really moving the ball well on the ground, but there's a flag down at the 13. Yeah, I think they're going to call a hold. Yeah, you know, right. I think maybe the right tackle got that one. But I tell you, Barry, when somebody goes for his feet, he kind of like dives over him and gets another two, three yards on that, knowing that that guy coming at his ankles is going to take him out. So he kind of dives over top of him and gets himself a couple extra yards. But unfortunately for him, penalty called. And with the penalty yards, it pushes them back to the 23-yard line, first down 14 now. Two wide receivers, actually three bunched up on the right side. Beery, quick toss out to the right. That's caught by Keegan Wilson. And Wilson, not much space as he might have gotten a yard. Yeah. Good job by the Titan defense there. That play was kind of slow developing. Uh, got out there. It was kind of a wide receiver screen. Titans read it perfectly. Got out there as soon as they seen the receivers didn't get get off the ball, they kind of like jumped it and got in got in there to make their tackle. So they did give him, no, they put him right back at the line of scrimmage. So second down, 14. 25 on the clock, nine on the play clock. Beery alone in the backfield as man goes in motion. That's Banks, Beery will keep it. Beery with some space and again, like you said, diving over the tackler as he crosses the 10 yard line. Actually, they actually put him down at the 11. 11 yeah. If Landon Mormon didn't get there, I think uh, the band's playing and he gets himself into the end zone. So that'll probably take us to the end of that first quarter. Does indeed. So when we return, it's a third down and two for the Indians. It's 7 nothing. Titans on top right here on WOSN. Tonight's first call is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we are building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Welcome back to Shawnee High School where the Indians are scoreless to start this second quarter, but knocking on the door their first score as quarterback Chase Beery running to the left side, and he's met. I think he's a little short. I think he's about half yard, maybe one yard short, but... I, w I would think this is four down territory, one and six. Uh, I think you're going to go try to get points in, in touchdowns instead of field goals. It is fourth down short. 
Coach Jerry Cooper sending Chase Beery back in with a play. Indians will line up in the shotgun. Beery with Zach Noonan to his right. Beery keeps this one. And he'll get plenty he got to enough for the first down. Maybe looked like he got down there to the eight yard line, it looks like. Got a couple of yards, a little quarterback keeper and kind of follow Noonan in the hole and uh, got enough for, for falls forward for a first down there. Ball up to the eight yard line. It's a Dale's concrete first down for the Shawnee Indians. Let's see if the Titans can uh, hold and force a field goal here or kind of get down inside the 20 and they don't get that motion. Let's see if they go back to it here. Beery running left, that ball's tucked away. He's yeah. gonna go into the end zone for the score and the Indians are a PAT away from tying this one up. Yeah, it's a great job by the receivers out here on the left, all both of them and then they brought in, look like a pulling uh, another like a running back to lead the way and they all had a hat on a hat and allowed him to go basically untouched until he got tackled right at the goal line looked like. Great play call, great execution by the Indians. And Beery, when he turns on the Jets, yeah. he gets upfield in a hurry. He sure does. He, he gets his shoulder square to the end zone and he goes. They got a lot of guys that put their foot in the ground and get going. This kick is up and it is good and your score is tied at seven on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard as we step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Tonight, I'd rather be indoors as it's getting awfully <laughs> chilly here yeah, unfortunately, in fall Northwest is, Ohio. Yeah, fall is coming, isn't it? Darn it. Shawnee and Ottawa Glandorf tied at seven apiece on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. After an eight yard touchdown run by quarterback Chase Beery. Now the Indians will kick this one back to the Titans. And that drive was set up by that nice return off that kickoff to get nice into Titan territory and made that short field for them for the go for a touchdown. This one picked up by Landon Mormon as he returns to the left side near the 30 yard line and the Titans come back out. Both these offenses kind of struggled to get going early on, but both had a nice drive on their last possession. Yeah, they sure did. Shawnee's is more methodical than the Titans, obviously. The Titans with a 75-yard uh, pass and catch touchdown. Shawnee kind of wants six, seven, eight, nine yards at a time running the football down the field and uh, got into the end zone on a nice quarterback keeper. Kuhlman passes this one outside, almost picked off. Nice jump there by the Shawnee defensive back, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, I think uh, the Titans are lucky that was a little low down by the knees, but if that was up a little higher, that might have been an interception for a touchdown. Good job by Keegan Wilson out there to read that and jump that route. You know, if, you know, if you are a Titan fan, if... Carter Dooling could have caught that. There was no one over there. That's he was right. kind of one-on-one, -on -one and he jumped that. You do things like that. you got to make sure you either catch it or knock it down. They'll run this one to the running back. Cy Rump as he picks up a couple. They'll give him two yards to bring up third down eight. Good positive yard is there for the Titans. Great job by the uh, interior lineman from Shawnee to come up there and make a play. Looks like a Caius Richardson in there on the tackle for Shawnee. Three wide receivers split out to the right side. It's Vinny Brinkman lined up to the right of Kuhlman. Kuhlman running to his right and he loses his footing. I think he was going to be brought down anyway yeah. as Shawnee brought some good pressure from the outside. And they sure did. They came with a little linebacker blitz and got to Kuhlman. They weren't going to let him sit there and pick him apart like he did before. They kind of had single coverage on Kuhlman's left and 
they had the trips over here to the right and they kind of played more zone. So it was more zone on this side of the field and opposite side was a man to man, but they also brought blitz pressure and got to Kuman before he could make a pass. Brings up fourth down 20 as the punting unit comes onto the field. It'll be kicked away by Connor Kitchen. And the kick is a bit short as it ends up at the 50 yard line. Fair caught by Keegan Wilson and back out comes the Shawnee offense. Shawnee with a nice drive on their last possession capped by that eight yard touchdown run by Chase Beery. We'll see if the Titans can uh, handle that misdirection kind of they've want, they want to that until they about they got inside the 10 yard line and then they kind of went away with more traditional spread looks. Uh, kind of what looks like it is right now. Beery hands this one off. That's Zach Noonan. Yep. Noonan picks up about three yards. Second down, seven coming up as we near the nine minute mark in the second quarter. Pretty quick moving first quarter. It sure is. Both teams really kept the ball on the ground and moved relatively efficiently. Beery has a wide receiver split either direction. He's going to run this one to the left. Beery looking for some space and finds a little bit as he picks up two. And that was uh, defended well by the Titans. They stayed on their blocks and didn't really – they didn't, there was no cutback lanes for him. There was no open lanes for a run. He tried to, uh, Barry tried to string it out and see if his blockers could make a block for him, but the Titans uh, did a great job of stopping him, and then here came the linebackers, cleaned up, and made the play. Brings up a third down five. Indians in Titan territory. And it looks like the Titans. Nope, sorry, the Indians take their first time out of the half with 8.09 to go in the second quarter. 7-7, seven, seven, your score tied here at Shawnee. We'll be right back. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick. Call Dale's for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Indians looking for a first down here, but a good play in the backfield. Ryan Ross comes in from his cornerback. I think might have had a cornerback blitz there to hurry up and get to the quarterback, and uh, good job by Ryan to get there and knock him down. So uh, I think maybe a short gain of one. Yeah. So fourth down four. The Indians will have to punt this one away. Sewell, who... He's able to get a lot of air under the last one. Kicks more of a line drive, but the fair catch at the 11-yard line pins the Titans pretty deep. As Grant Schrader caught that one. So good job by Grant to go get that one and uh, be first and 10 at the 15. See that how much time left. I'm stuck. Oh, Seven thirty-seven on the clock. We're <laughs> stuck in the, here in the far corner. right corner of the press box, so kind of hard to see that scoreboard to our right. Especially when you're sitting down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Walk halfway down to the other side to see it. Well, unfortunately, there's no. There's only one scoreboard here in the stadium. Most schools have them on both ends of the field. Not here at Shawnee Stadium. Ball on the 12-yard line as the Titans go back to work. And they've got a different quarterback in there as they rotate Landon Mormon back. Who started the year as a quarterback, and then he hurt his shoulder and his elbow. Had to come out for a couple weeks, and that's when Peyton stepped in. Maybe kind of a wildcat look there for the Titans. Uh, Landon's a pretty good runner. It's a pickup of two yards, so a second down eight coming up, and they stick with Mormon back in the backfield. Cy Rump lined up to his left. Mormon running out to the left side, looking for some space. He has some as he cuts up field and crosses the 20 yard line. Looks like he'll be about a yard or two short of the first down, but a nice play by the Titans. Yeah, and Titans kind of gone with 
the Shawnee kind of look, right? The Shawnee's been running their quarterback, who was a running back before their original quarterback got hurt. So they're kind of running the Wildcat uh, look. So the Titans kind of thought, well, we, we got that in our arsenal too. So maybe maybe we can loosen them up a little bit and, and get some uh, positive yardage. Brings up third down two. Mormon stays back. Mormon's just going to try to run this right up the middle, and First he's going to be yeah. close. It looks like he'll have it, and he does. It's another Dales concrete. First down for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. And both teams like to run the quarterback, and the reason why is that gives them an extra blocker, right? You, you don't have to, as a quarter, the traditional quarterback that we've been used to up until the last five or six years, but normally the quarterback would hand off to a running back and kind of go and, and run out some fake that no one ever followed him or nothing. But now when the quarterback becomes a runner, that allows the running back to be a blocker and everybody else. So you get an extra blocker running the play, and that's kind of why a lot of teams like the running quarterback. And now they try kind of a Tim yeah. Tebow jump pass yeah. as it falls it, short. It was between Vinnie Brinkman and Cy Rump there. They Both guys kind of were in the same spot, and, Landon kind of panicked when he seen some guys coming there. Second and 10 now, 6-10 on the clock. Ball on the 23-yard line. Looks like I see Peyton Kuma coming back in, so they're going back with more of the uh, traditional. And not, not that Peyton can't run, but uh, he's more of a quarterback that throws the ball. Landon's more of a running quarterback. Kuman will look to pass, gets a nice block, job rolls out Vinny. to his right, now tries to pull it down and picks up positive yardage. No, he did lose yard. about a yard. Yeah. Good job by Vinny Brinkman. To, I mean, that blitz was coming, and Vinny took on, took on the blitzer and kind of shooed him away, but Austin Moss's guy, I couldn't see the number, kind of shed him and then got to Peyton Kuman for the sack or a loss of, I don't know if they call that a sack or not, but tackle for loss anyways. Brings up third down 11. Kuman again in the shotgun. Two wide receivers split out right. Rump lined up right behind him. Wants to pass. Rolling out to his left. Still looking. No one open. Now he throws it over the top. Oh, and how catch. about the one-handed catch? Carter dueling with a one-handed grab. And, you know, you, you, the catch was amazing, but Peyton Kuman did a great job of throwing that over the defender and putting it right in between two defenders and putting it in a location where only Carter could catch it. That was a heck of a throw <laughs> and probably just as, just as good a throw as it was a catch there by Carter dueling. Pushes the ball into Indian territory up to the 48-yard line. It's a heck of a touch there by the sophomore Peyton Kuman. Kuman still in the game. Rump to his right. And this time he'll hand it off as Rump running left. And he picks up a couple. Yeah. And I don't know if that was supposed to go to the left. It looked like from what I was watching the play, he had, we had two pulling linemen coming to the, or we, I should say, Ottawa Glander, had two pulling linemen coming to the this side, and Rump went, ran the opposite way. Still ends up going for three yards. Yeah, and, and you know, when, when they run it, run it, run it, mix in some passes, keeps the defensive guessing. That's exactly what the Titans need to do here to to uh, stay in this game. Kuman fakes one, now throws, and that's well over the head of the intended target. And it's great coverage by Keegan Wilson out there. I mean, Keegan, Keegan's been kind of out on an island. They... They, he's their best cover corner, so they put him out there, and he's basically locked in man-to-man, -man, whoever's out there, and then they play zone on the Shawnee half of the field here, and he's out there all by himself. Safety shifts over here. Coaching staff has a lot of trust in him. Third and seven, he throws out to Rump, and I believe the ball hit the turf. It sure did, incomplete pass, which, which is a good thing for right. the Titans fans because that would have been about an eight- or nine-yard loss. I'm not sure if this is a four-down territory. Nope, there comes the punting team. That's 
for a game that could very well be low scoring sometimes. Yeah. The field position battle is key. Especially with just over four minutes to go in the game. That's probably want to try to pin them deep and let's see if the defense can make a play. If you're a Titans fan, uh, if you're an Indians fan, you want to at least get out of your end zone and flip the field a little bit. Help your defense out. Or nice. score before half. Nice high kick, and it takes a bounce and coffin corner. Yeah, it sure did. It looks like my guess is about five yard line. And referee still. Oh, wow. They're going to mark. Nope. Yeah, five there you yard go. Line. Five yard yeah. line. Yeah. Good call Got by the, right. the old eyes of <laughs> Scott Mag. <laughs> I can see the football, but I can't see these red <laughs> numbers on the black jerseys. So four minutes to go for Shawnee to try to get something in the end zone before the half. Two timeouts for either team. It was a good job by Connor Kitchen. That was a heck of a punt. Got a good tight and bounce to go towards the end zone. I thought, oh, gosh, he was going to go into the end zone, but kind of almost went at a 50-degree angle left and went out of bounds. We'll see if Shawnee comes back to that motion Beery takes the snap. He'll hand this one off. They'll run left. What this a play. What a read by Banks. It. Yeah. Landon Mormon comes flying in from his safety position. We'll see if maybe they kind of run some sort of play action pass because he is coming downhill hard off once the ball is snapped. He is flying from his safety position to come up and make a tackle. I was listening to Billy Elvis' interview with both head coaches on my way. Over here, and both of the coaches said these are two really good defensive teams. Yeah. And tonight, we've certainly seen that. I know the win-loss record isn't necessarily what you want to see, but both defenses playing hard this season and certainly showing up in this game. Absolutely. Beery wants to throw. He has a man deep if he can set his feet. A little bit underthrown and incomplete. Yeah, Landon Mormon, I was watching him because I, I was you know I was thinking, well, maybe they're going to think the same thing they did. They faked that handoff. He bit three. He ran three steps in, and then, oh, he turned his, he turned his uh, body and started flying down the field as the pass was intended to Keegan Wilson, who was open. And I think, you know, that's Barry's lack of experience as a quarterback because he threw that one. He did have him open. He did recognize it, but he just threw it just a little late. If he would have got rid of that, a second or two earlier, Keegan Wilson would have had himself a nice big game there because Landon Mormon was coming hard like he has the, every play since because he's reading run. He's thinking run first. And did someone call a timeout here? Yeah, I think uh, the Indians did, I believe. <laughs> Coach Cooper still uh, <laughs> arguing that wanted a pass interference call. And uh, sent a different player into the game. That might have been one guy short. Well, they sent yeah, Wilson play. off the field. Yeah, and the play clock was going running down and as well as they were one guy short, maybe. Well, back underway. Third down, 11. It was an incomplete pass, and the clock is currently ticking, so that's not right. But play continues anyway. Now the referees will stop the clock. I'll have to try put to about six out. more seconds on there. Yeah, I don't know what do they did they. I don't know if they got a timeout because if they got a timeout. They should have came to the sidelines, but they just ran a player in. Maybe they, uh, maybe maybe uh, Keegan Wilson had to come out because maybe his mouthpiece or I don't know something. They had to come out. That's why they subbed the player in late, and then they started the the time clock running. Finally underway as the Indians keep the ball on the ground, and it's a pickup of a couple, but still well short of the first down, and Coach Schreiner wants to take a timeout, yeah. I believe. I believe so. And that's a good timeout by Coach Schreiner there because I don't know how much time this got to be less. Well, there's 2.54 on the yeah. clock. Coach Schreiner's yelling because Shawnee, or the, I'm sorry, the clock did tick down six seconds after the incompletion, even though it shouldn't have. So Coach Schreiner wants some more time on the clock. We'll see if he gets it, but we'll have to wait till after the break to find out. 2.54 to go in the half, 7-7 seven, seven your score. Welcome back to Shawnee High School. 2.54 to go until halftime. 
Indians with a fourth down and eight. They need to punt this one away, and they do. Sewell sends this over to the 35-yard line, takes an Indians bounce, but it'll be great field position for the Titans as they'll start around their the Indians' 44-yard line. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime. We'll have our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac halftime adjustments. See if uh, defense will hold or if the Titans can at least get on the scoreboard. They got a pretty good uh, field goal kicker, so maybe they get 15, 20 yards here, at least have an attempt for a field goal. One interesting note is that we haven't had a penalty in the second quarter. <laughs> we have not, have we? And our first call sponsor tonight is Citizens National <laughs> Bank, and they haven't gotten enough love because there just haven't been enough penalties yeah. in this game, but we appreciate their sponsorship of tonight's first call. We'll see if we get a flag here before the end of the half as the Titans go back to work. Kuhlman keeps this one on the ground with Cy Rump. And, and Hard spun himself out of a tackle to get himself three or four extra yards there. Ends up with a three-yard gain. Might be an official's good job, piece of officiating. Carter Fay was kind of laying on the ground, and I think they're going to take him out. He doesn't look too good coming off there. I don't. Yeah, that's a little bit better. He just kind of looked a little groggy. Good job by the officials. I mean, that's got a kid's safety is the most important thing, anyways. Absolutely. So second down seven. One timeout left for the Titans. Kuman throws this out to the right side and good coverage as it's knocked down by Zach Noonan. Yeah, Noonan did a good job of getting his hand on it. Carter had it in his in his hands, and Noonan got his hand in there and knocked it away. Good piece of uh, being a cornerback there by Noonan. Brings up third down seven. Two twenty one on the clock. Ball on the forty yard line. Titans split three wide receivers out right, one to the left. Kuhlman in the backfield with Vinny Brinkman lined up next to him. Kuhlman steps up, throws this one. It's complete. So Cy Rump in the in the seam, still running. And a nice gain there, enough for the Dales Concrete first down. Kuhlman hit the turf, but he threw a bullet. He sure did. He hung in there, hung in there, and got rid of that right at the last minute because he took a lick after he got rid of that. Uh, the Indians were just a half step short of getting to him. Good job by Cy Rump to get in the middle of that zone, find an open spot, and Kuhlman found him and turned it upfield. Kuhlman wants to pass again. This time floats one to the end zone, and that's incomplete. A little bit overthrown, but good coverage nonetheless on the far side by Keegan Wilson. I think the pressure coming up the middle made him get rid of that ball just a bit earlier than he wanted to as the pass was intended to uh, Griffin Simon running down the sidelines, and, and Kuhlman just got rid of that just a hair before he wanted to because the pressure was coming. Kind of back stepped through that off his back foot, and still, it ain't bad throwing a 30-yard pass off your back foot there. You can sling it, man. Ball on the 22-yard line, second and 10. Kuhlman steps up, still wants to throw, and now he's brought down. We've seen that a couple times tonight. Kuhlman gets up a little slowly, kind of got whipped down, and that's, that's if you're a Titans fan right now, that's not one you wanted to see. You want to see Kuhlman get rid of that ball because... Now they might have just took themselves out of field goal position after all the way back here to the 28 when the ball originally was on the 22-yard line. Joey Spiker on the tackle. Way not to give up on the play by Joey Spiker. Three-man front for the Indians, three wide receivers split out left. Kuman looks, throws, and... Might have slipped out of his hand as it was well short of Cy Rump and a fourth down and long coming up. 103 on the clock. Probably four down territory for Titans. This might be just out of, this would be a 45 yarder and I think Coach Reiner, I don't know, he might let this run down and then decide 20 seconds. I guess it doesn't matter because the clock's not running because it was an incomplete pass. Fourth and 16. 
Rump goes in motion. Kuhlman throws for the end zone and incomplete. More great coverage downfield by Zach Noonan, and that was almost another one-handed grab by Carter yeah. Dooling. But instead, it's a turnover on downs, and the Indians will have 57 seconds and two timeouts to try to score here. Yeah, Koopman put that on the numbers. I just think, don't think Carter Doolin got his head around soon enough to see that uh, that pet that pass because if he got his head around, he could have seen that because it. I think when he turned, he just got his hand and hit him right on that right arm. And as the uh, players get closer to us here on the sideline, I've got to correct that sack. It was actually Garrett Looney on the sack two plays ago. As Shawnee takes over here, Beery. Takes the snap, he'll keep it on the ground, looking for space on the right side. Picks up a couple. That tackle made by Grant Schrader. Schrader yep. Four yard pickup, second down, six coming up. And uh, defensive lineman Austin Haley was there too on the play, the sophomore uh, interior lineman. Also helped him bring him down a little bit. Shawnee in no hurry, 30 seconds. Second down five, actually. So it was a pickup of five officially. They'll keep this one on the ground. It's Wilson. Wilson looking for space. He's still in bounds. He's going to try to make something happen and instead loses about eight yards. Yeah. I don't think Coach Cooper's too irritated by that. It's no. With seven seconds left, he might as well give it a shot. And actually, I think he is going to take his last or one of his last two timeouts. They want to run one more play here, yeah. Scott Mag. He, they sure do. I'll tell you, he took a lick on the sideline. I think Ryan Ross is still feeling that. He kind of was bending over and had his hands on his knees because that was a heck of a collision. And uh, Ryan Ross took the uh, brunt of that. Yeah, I was amazed that he was still on his feet because I thought he was going to go flying out of bounds. But he took on the hit and turned around. He tried to make a play. It's like you said, he lost eight yards. The coach can't, can't fault the effort. But at that time, you know, yardage is what you're wanting, not trying to run around. Also took away some time. Well, on one hand, yeah. if you are just trying to let the clock run down, yeah. you don't mind that. But now right. that you actually do want to score, you probably do want that six yards back. But yeah. that's all right. Yeah. Third down, 13, two seconds on the clock, presumably the last play of the half. Coming up for Shawnee. Beery again in the shotgun. And this isn't Beery, actually. This is number five. Oh, that is Beery, excuse me, but it falls incomplete nonetheless. So that is the end of the second quarter. Your score is 7 7 on the Structure Outdoor scoreboard. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some halftime adjustments after this on WOSN. Our halftime adjustments are presented by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. 7-7, seven, seven, your halftime score between the Shawnee Indians and the Ottawa Glandorf Titans. Evan Skilleter and Scott Mag with you. And Scott, talk about halftime adjustments. It's 7-7, seven, seven, both teams pretty even in this matchup. If you're in the locker room and you're a coach for either one of these teams, what are some adjustments you would make? Well, I think both teams have to discuss about that misdirection. I just think Shawnee, want, when they want their, that scoring drive, they were really utilizing that misdirection. They had people in motion. They'd run behind it or they would go jet sweep. I think they had some success in it. I think in your Titans, you at least got to talk about it. You got to bring that up because you've got to recognize that and, and get and play good assignment football. Um, defensively, if you're Shawnee, I think they're doing everything what they need to do. It's just that one play that kind of got away. Like you said, he, the, the receiver or the cornerback just kind of pushed dueling instead of making the tackle, and he forgot that he was on the uh, man side, and he just ran away from guys. But for the most part, they just got to keep playing good assignment football on the defensive end. Offensively, I think they need to go back to that, that motion and, and, and really try to get the Titans guessing because they're shifting – the one they run that motion is kind of getting the Titans out of position. They're kind of running behind it. I think they got to develop something. Uh, you know, if they can do some misdirection, maybe fake a handoff and maybe get a receiver. They had it 
early, which Coach Cooper wanted that pass interference that time. But I, me and you both agreed that we thought Landon Worm did a good job of getting there, and it wasn't pass interference. But that's what they got to do because he is coming hard, hard off that, off from his safety, coming up, supporting the run. Maybe fake some of that and maybe get a guy going deep. Uh, Titans, I think they got to be able to run the ball a little bit more too. If they got to run the ball because, you know, Shawnee's putting eight guys in a box. If they can run a little bit, they might be able to get a receiver on a, a five-yard out, might be a 20-yard gain. They got to they got to open up that middle somehow to open up then the outside on that passing lane. Thank you, Scott. Looking forward to a great second half here. Hope you are too. We'll be right back with the second half kickoff after this on WOSN. Tonight's first call is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Welcome back for the start of the second half at Shawnee High School where the Indians are locked up with the Ottawa Glendorf Titans 7-7. Seven to seven. And the Indians kick it to the Titans to get things started as it'll be returned from the 11-yard line and up to about the 28. And so Scott Mag. A half that only saw one touchdown each way, but I know you have some stats to share. Yeah, just kind of some of the things that we talked about earlier in the in the basically the pregame we talked about, you know, kind of even teams, and I think uh, these stats kind of play this out. And you know, first of all, first downs, total first downs, OG five, Shawnee seven, uh, penalty yardage. OG had one with his a pretty well played game. OG had one penalty for 10 yards and Shawnee had two penalties for 15 yards. So, you know, really close in both of those stats. Uh, total yards, um, OG Titans 138 and Shawnee 91. But here is where we kind of touched on our halftime adjustments where we said the Titans got to run the ball a little bit. Total rushing yards, the Titans negative two yards. Shawnee 80. Now some of those negative two yards is because of a quarterback taking uh, sacks. Uh, I think he has like four rushes for minus 28 yards as a quarterback, but still uh, total rushing yards, OG minus two, Shawnee 80. We said at the halftime adjustments, Titans got to be able to run the ball a little bit. <laughs> they got to get at least uh, the negative numbers <laughs> right. to at least give themselves a sh shot. But you know, for total offense, Titans have 138 to 91, you know, it's kind of flipped the other way. Titans, negative two yards rushing, total of 138, which means they have 140 yards passing. On the other end, Shawnee, 80 yards rushing and only 91 total yards. So, you know, they're only getting 11 yards passing, 80 yard rushing. So it's kind of like they're opposites of each other and it's very close, very similar. That's why the score is 7-7 as uh, Vinny Brinkman is kind of walking off the field here. Got hurt on that kickoff, now kind of limping. You mentioned 140 passing yards. 75 of those came on yeah, one play. Right, right, right. So both offenses really looking to get going, but both defenses having quite the showing tonight as the Titans will take over from their own 30-yard line. Kuhlman and Mormon in the backfield. Mormon took a couple snaps as quarterback, but it'll be Kuhlman who starts. Rolling left, looking to pass. Still looking, now throws. He's got a man, and it is incomplete, incomplete yeah, intended job. for Grant Schrader. Yeah, I believe Ben Bullock over there, number 11, after I've seen him coming over here. He did a good job of getting in front and knocking that one away from Grant Schrader. Grant did a good, good route there, but Bullock did a better job of getting in front and knocking that one away. So second down, 10. It was a pretty quick moving first half. Only took about an hour of actual time to get through. Kuhlman hands this one off and Mormon takes a hard hit after picking up a yard. Nice job by the middle of that Shawnee offense. Or defense rather. And uh, 26, Chase. Uh, no, six, Garrett Lo Looney there with a tackle there, that nice hit. It's a pickup of one, so it brings up third down nine. They'll split three wide receivers out to the left side, one down on the near side. 
Kuman with Mormon to his left, rolling that way. Still looking. He's got to get rid of it. He does, and it's caught and still on his feet. Ryan Ross. Ross down the right side. Ross crosses the 30, crosses the 20, and he's hit out of bounds at the 14-yard line. How about the catch there? Kuhlman did take a hard yes, hit, and he's still, still down. Yeah, he got he held that ball to the very last minute. Give that kid credit to sticking, sticking in there to complete that pass, and he got sandwiched as he let that one go. I kind of watched, and two Shawnee defenders met, one in his back, one in his front, and he's still down, but... Great pass and great, great effort by him to know that he's going to get stuck. And he put that right on the money to uh, Ryan Ross, and he ran away from the from the defenders. And as they take a look at the quarterback, Peyton Kuhlman, we'll step aside. 10.53 to go here, 7-7 seven, seven, your score. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Welcome you back to Shawnee as quarterback Peyton Kuhlman makes his way to the sideline and Landon Mormon will take over quarterback duties. On first down 10, they'll hand this to Rump and Rump stopped in the backfield. Nice job by Shawnee getting in the backfield right there by Caius Richardson. Yeah, he did a great job from his uh, defensive line position. He just like split the gap and met at the quarterback. Um, again, I think Shawnee, this makes OG kind of one dimensional that they know the run's coming. So they're flying up the line of scrimmage, right? To try to get to the ball carrier slash quarterback. Um, I don't think they're afraid of the pass as like they would be if Peyton was in. Mormon will try to run this one up the middle. He's got some space. Nice cut to the outside. And Mormon gets about 10 on the carry. Good job by Landon Mormon to kind of slow play that one. He kind of waited and let the lineman get through. Not, I mean, and as well as his running back to make some blocks for him and got himself into open field and got all the way down to the 10-yard line. He went about second and, or third and six here. It is third and six. They need the four-yard line for the Dales Concrete first down. See if the Titans break out a pass to... and Landon Mormon uh, from the backside. It was Joe Spiker on the tackle. The threes and the sixes are kind of <laughs> smushed together. So good job by Spiker. Now a field goal attempt, 28-yard attempt. And that looked good, but it bounced right off the right upright. Had plenty of distance, yeah. but it falls no good, and the score remains 7-7. Seven, seven. Titans had this a uh, couple week, weeks ago. Uh, where uh, Holmbrink hit the goal post, plenty of leg from about the same distance. Yeah, I believe it was Van Wert. So Shawnee will take over at the 20 yard line ball at the middle of the field. It, yeah, that hit every bit of three fourths of the way. I mean, that could have been good from 48 yards. It was drilled, just unfortunately hit the goal post. Shawnee takes over first and 10 for the 20. Dodge a bullet there. Chase Beery back in shotgun. He'll hand this one off. Left side. Cutting up field is Zach Noonan. And Noonan has enough for the Dales concrete first down as he gets 14 yards on the carry. Yeah. Good job by Noonan to slow play that and let his blockers set up the blocks. And he uh, the good job of... This receiver out here on this side, I didn't catch the number, but a good job of a blocked Metzger to the outside, and he cut back behind it and got himself an extra 10 yards. The gain officially good for 16 yards. First and 10 for Shawnee. Two wide receivers split either direction. 
Beery will keep this one on the ground. Can't find anywhere to run as he's brought down right at the line of scrimmage with forward progress. I think Austin Healy was there and made that hit, and then some all of his friends came. Lawson Schrader came there and cleaned that one up. And maybe Connor Kitchen was in on that. <laughs> Second down, 10. The announcers <laughs> could have been this guy or this guy. <laughs> I appreciate the self-deprecation. Right, right. <laughs> he knows it's hard to see from up here just <laughs> like we do. <laughs> this time, two wide receivers split to the left for Shawnee. Beery throws quickly. That's caught by Jordan Banks. And Banks picks up a couple, but a good tackle on the outside there by 18. That's Ryan Ross. Good job by the Titans to get out there. As Cy Rump goes flying out of bounds and puts his hands up like, come on, that was... Ten seconds after the play, it's telling you. It, it, it's the second time we've seen that. Right, and they're going after him. Um, leave, give that man credit. He's take, keeping his cool and not retaliating because normally what happens is the guy who retaliates is the one that gets called for the penalty. They pick up three, third down seven here. Shawnee kind of getting struggling here to get lined up. Here's that motion. Beery gives sweet. this one to Banks. Banks has some space on the right side, and he picks up the Dales Concrete first down as he crosses into Titan territory. Actually, they might have him just short at the 49-yard line, but a first down nonetheless. Yeah, a little jet sweep. Kind of went back to that motion and, and got him over here from the short side, and they jet sweeped him to the, to the strong side and was able to get a block out there by the receiver. Uh, great play. They had a lot of success with that on their uh, scoring drive. Kind of touched on at the halftime adjustment. They had to get more of that because they can get them receivers out there on the outside and, and make some plays in space. Now they'll run one to the other side with Banks. Banks, nice job following his blockers, but a nice shoestring tackle by 23. That's Jordan Metzger. Metzger. Yep. He was just on the ground and reached out like an alligator and grabbed his leg. <laughs> he sure did. He came up with it, kind of he looked around like, where did he come from? It's a pickup of six, second down four. As uh, Justice Pope come from his linebacker spot, he kind of read the gap and shot the gap, but he was just a half second late and allowed that jet sweep to get outside. But he, he read it. He just was a little late getting there. Beery hands this one off. They run Noonan. right up the middle with Noonan. And Noonan has a Dale's concrete first down. A good drive from Shawnee as they're – Gaining positive yardage on basically every play they run. Right, yeah, but it's a lot of these plays is very similar to that scoring drive. They have the jet sweep right, the jet sweep left, and then they go Noonan up the middle, or they go quarterback draw up the middle. You know, it's a lot of things that uh, these are their four or five bread and butter plays that got them down for that touchdown earlier. Ball up to the Titan 44 yard, excuse me, 39 yard line. They'll run this one with Beery. Beery picks up a couple more, and they're just chipping away. Yeah, four or five yards to crack, and, you know, four or five, six yards, and they're just kind of eating. Not only that, they're eating up the clock. They're getting uh, down in distance right where they want to be. You know, if you're a running team, you want it second and five, second and four, you know, manageable, not second and ten, and then that makes them a passing. And, you know, from the stats that we mentioned at the start of this quarter, they rather run the ball, obviously, with 80 rushing yards compared to only 11 passing. Second down six, 440 on the clock. They'll run the sweep, and Banks able to break a tackle. Now gets up field. Almost. Austin Haley was almost got out there. He did a heck of a job from his defensive line position to get through there and just he's too quick as a cat to get past him. <laughs> you know? Those defensive line guys fight like crazy, and they get there and they get in the open field, and those fast guys just go right around them and just make them upset. So it's a pickup of two. Yeah. Third down four, I guess five yards to what, go, a long four. Yeah, and I would imagine this is probably two down territory for the Indians. I, you know, they're on the OG side of the 50 and, you know, this late in the game. And when you're getting four or five yards doing that, heck yes. Beery's going to be close to another yeah. first down. This might be one that they have to measure. Yeah. 
think. Uh, Let's see where they put the ball down. I might be just a tad short. Just past the 30. I think they got to get closer to the 29. So he's about a half a yard short, I think. He is short indeed. They're not even going yep. to measure this. So it's fourth and very short for the Indians. No Coop. question they're going to go for this one. <laughs> Cooper was begging for a measurement, not one that gets a clock stopped and gives him a free timeout, but the official said, no, this is definitely for it down. So he had to run in the play. Look for the quarterback, Barry, probably run this one up the middle. And Beery, nice cut as he was yes, almost met on sure the was. outside, but he picks up four, and it's another Dale's concrete first down. That was a heck of a heck of a read. A little put his foot in the ground with his right foot and dodged back to the left and got himself two extra yards. You can tell he's <laughs> a running back by trade, right, man, right. because that most quarterbacks, at least at the high school level, don't make that that run. There's a lot of running back moves there. Chase Beery is listed as a running back, and he was the starting running back on this team before quarterback Dominic Lynch went out with an injury. Beery has Banks lined up to his left. Running that way. He's got a couple blockers looking for the edge. Cuts inside, picks up a couple more. And again, yeah. they're just chugging away. The Titans have only touched the ball or had one possession in this half, and we're already under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah. Titans and some of these linemen are just begging for holds. I don't know if if uh, they're getting held here a little bit, but I've seen a couple. Of we have not seen a penalty since the first quarter. <laughs> right. No, I, you know, the announcer jinx. See if we uh, jinx both these teams here. I'm trying to get some Citizens National Bank calls in here. <laughs> right. I'm not going to sponsor anymore. Beery, right side. And here comes the flag, <laughs> just like that. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, they, they, yeah, they're going to have to call a hold because it, I, uh, I'd seen a couple of them, and Titans were begging, like, come on, and they got, they got their wish there. They kind of, hey, can you watch this? And sure enough, we back them up ten. Now that, you know, this penalty not only backs them up ten yards, but now that gets them behind the sticks. Right now, they got to. This is a huge play for them to get some of that penalty yardage back because they're not really built for third and 10. So now it is second and 15. So they want to get at least eight or nine yards here. They're not built for a second and 15, third and 15. And that was the first call of the quarter sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we are building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Our first penalty since the first quarter. Backs Shawnee up to second and 16, and they're going to run a double oh, pass. Oh, wow, what a and play. And it's in for the touchdown. Coach Schreiner says it was a forward pass. Referees not having it as we've got a touchdown. Zach Noonan catching the pass from Jordan Banks as the Indians take the lead on the Dales Concrete scoreboard. Yeah, and heck of a pass by Jordan Banks. He put that right on the money. Pretty pass there. For also another guy listed as a running back. Oh, and here comes a flag. I think this one, sideline side warning, because I think Coach Reiner's still arguing his point over there. And yes, sideline warning against the Titans. They get one warning per game. So here you said no penalties, and now, now we had two in a row. That's right. <laughs> Kimmett on for the PAT. And it's up, and it is good. good. 150 to go in the third quarter. It's 14 to 7, Shawnee on top, right here on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. Call Dale's for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. 14-7, the Indians of Shawnee on top as they kick this back to the Titans. It was a touchdown pass from Jordan Banks to Zach Noonan. A double pass, and now the Titans drop the football. Looked like they fell on it. 
thought I saw. I think I seen a tight jump Vogt on. Mason get there yeah, first. I think so too. Yep, Mason. Good job by Mason to be Johnny on the spot to get that one. And and now we got the backup slash starting quarterback down too because he took a shot when he got to the 40 when he returned that kick. So uh, you know if you're a Titan fan right now, you're kind of wondering, uh oh, oh, starting quarterback out now. There's this guy out. So with that, we'll step aside. 139 on the clock. They'll take a look at Mormon, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Shawnee, the injured player. Landon Mormon able to get up and walk off the field under his own power. Now, It'll be interesting to see who comes out at quarterback. And it looks like Cy Rump lined up at quarterback here. And Cy Rump, the last time he played quarterback was an eighth grade year on the uh, junior high team. Uh, he's going to run this one. Nice cut, but the Shawnee. How about the penetration from yeah. the Shawnee defense? Well, I, you know, Titans on the third quarterback of the night. It allows them to really not, again, the, Cy Rump can throw the football. I'm not, I'm not belittling him by any means. I know he can throw the football and I know he can throw it, but if you're not know, your defense, you know 90% of what they're going to run probably is going to be run, so you're guessing run first and that makes your job easier. Just like if it, the score, if you're down three or four touchdowns, you know they're going to pass. It's a lot easier to get a pass rush. I think they're coming on a run blitz every time thinking that it's going to be a run. Rump rolling outside, has to cut back inside, has some space, makes a couple guys miss, and he crosses the 45 for a pickup of eight yards, third and two coming up. And you know what I do when the defense doesn't think I'm going to pass it? I'm just going to throw it over the top. Right, 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 absolutely. And that's and that's what the Titans, I, I got a feeling they're going to do that. And well, they trust him to throw the football, and I know he can throw the football. I've seen it happen before. He just made a great move there and get out in the space, and he probably was going to throw it. He's going to roll out. But uh, with the pressure, he had to turn it upfield, and he knew what to do with it when he got up the field. I think Landon Mormon's back in as quarterback. Good to see Mormon back yes. out there as he hands to Rump, and Rump met in the backfield, and he's brought down. By about five Shawnee Indians were there. Rump's slow to get up. The injury bud's kind of biting the Titans here. Rump's kind of limping off. That's a that's a big hurt because he such a big part on the defensive end. And it was the senior Shandon Sewell with the tackle in the backfield, and that ends a quick moving third quarter. It's 14 to 7. Shawnee on top on the structure outdoor scoreboard. Fourth down and six coming up when we return on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Fourth down and six as the Titans look to punt this one away. Nice high kick, fair catch called for Ooh. and dropped by the Indians, but yeah. they're able to fall on it. Yeah, that's what it would have been the turnover the Titans needed, but great job by Barry to get on that one to secure it for the Indians. So now Shawnee who had a, let's see here, about a nine minute drive on their last possession. They will start this drive from the 25 with 11.52 on the clock. And a lot of that, that the reason it was a nine minute drive is they were getting four or five yards of carry and it just kept Running the ball, running the roll, running ball. They run this with Jordan Banks. Banks to the left. Banks runs out of bounds, but not before Dale's concrete first down for the Shawnee Indians. And, and you know when it's working because he didn't get touched until 10 yards down the field. So I don't know if the Titans are that long nine-minute drive is wearing on them. They're getting tired or, or what, the, what the deal is or if maybe it's superior blocking by the Indians, something. But he didn't get touched until 10 yards down the field, and that's uh, – Catastrophe for disaster if you're a Titans fan right now. They've got to get some pressure on those running backs. 
Man in motion. They'll hand it off. This is Baker once again, or Banks, excuse me, once again. Banks has eight. been very active tonight as he picks up yeah. about eight yards on that. Looks like they actually put him back at the 49, so seven-yard pickup. But he's got some wheels, and they yeah. usually get him the ball on the move. And they get him on that jet sweep, but he did, he made a good read and cut that back up the middle because he's seen an opening. Um, probably because it would have took him too long to get on the outside. Good job blocking by those linemen to give him an alley to run up behind. Two wide receivers out wide. Banks goes in motion again. Banks gets it again, but this time nowhere to go as the Titans' defensive line holds. Yeah, and Justice Pope came from his linebacker position to get up there and, and at least get a hand on him to slow him down and allow his friends from the defensive line that you had mentioned to get there and make that tackle. I don't know if this is four down territory. A big, big, big possession here for the Titans that they got to get a stop and force the punt uh, for the Indians. They need that ball back, down seven. Ball right at the 45 yard line, third and two. Beery takes the snap, running right, has some space around the edge. He picks up the Dales concrete first down and moves into Titan territory as they put him out at that 49. Yeah, Creo, Crillo, Manny comes in from uh, playing uh, cornerback and uh, he pushes him out of bounds. Indians move the chains and move the clock. No hurry. Still 15 seconds left to see when they're start. You know, they're a they're lot, lot slower, lot taking a lot more time to snap the football here. Beery tucks this one away, looking to run left. Cuts upfield, and a flag comes in. I saw that hold on the left <laughs> side as well, and that will be the first call of the fourth quarter. And tonight's first call is sponsored by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Also an injury, an injured Indian down there. So we'll wait to see what the referee calls and then likely take a break. And it is a hold against the Indians. So they'll back them up and it'll be a first and long when we return. 14-7, Shawnee on top. Welcome back to Shawnee High School. First and 20 after the penalty to the Indians as they pass this one out quickly to Keegan Wilson. Wilson gets up the field and a nice pickup as they get those penalty yards back and then some. Yeah, and great block out here by uh, Christian Jones out here on Manny Carrillo to allow the, the receiver to turn up the field. I got him an extra 10 yards because he did a heck of a job blocking outside here on the defensive backs. It's a pickup of 16 to bring up second down four. Actually, it's second down five, so a pickup of 15 there. Two wide receivers either direction for Beery. One goes in motion. That's Christian Jones. Jones gets the carry, but he's met in the backfield and brought down by Austin Moss. Moss. Good job by Austin Moss. He's, he's had himself a heck of a game tonight. He's been in the backfield quite a lot, and uh, he's made some great open field tackles from his defensive line position. It's great a play, Austin Moss. Sorry. No, that's all right. It's a loss of three yards, third down eight here. Indians split two wide receivers out to the right side. Actually make it three, and now Coach timeout. Cooper yep. is going to take a timeout with 8.34 on the clock. We'll step aside as well. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Shawnee High School. Third down, eight following a timeout by Coach Cooper and the Indians. 
Beery rolls out to the right. Nice touch pass as it's complete to Jordan Banks. Banks makes a couple guys miss before he's pushed out of bounds. Yeah, he kind of stepped out of bounds uh, at the 34-yard line. Good job by Barry. He sold that like he was going to throw it deep. And he looked deep, looked deep, got the defensive backs going deep, and then he checked it down to Banks, and Banks got six yards. It's another Dales Concrete first down called Dales Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Ball at the Titan 34. They'll run this one with Zach Noonan, and Noonan picks up a couple, but another flag on the field sitting at the 33, right between the 33 and the 34. I don't know what, and uh, the umpire made um, Carter Fay go off, and he kind of followed him to the sidelines, so I don't know what that was about. It's a hold against the Indians. Still not sure about what the referees were looking at, but anyway. Yeah, it was a hold. Mm -hmm. So it'll be first and 19. Shawnee will certainly take their time here as the play clock already down to 15 before Beery even gets the play into the huddle. Clock just over eight minutes. Beery alone in the backfield. Noonan, or Wilson, excuse me, went in motion. Ooh. Now Beery gets upfield in a flash. Yes, he did. Wow. Good open field tackle by Grant Schrader to get him down. And he, you know, he, he's the guy that gets after the contact. I, I haven't seen him go down all night straight. He usually gets one or two yards after contact. You know, he's either diving because they're coming out his legs or he, he's falling forward for either a yard or two every time tonight. Quite impressive. Second and nine. Beery keeps this one, and he's hit and brought down. Justice Pope from his linebacker spot, and Carter Dooling was there. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage, so third and nine. I'm sorry, that's Ryan Ross from his cornerback spot came up and hit that. Can, he's kind of hobbling a little bit. Clock now under seven, Shawnee. Huge, 15 on the play clock. Huge uh, stop here for the Titans. They need this to get to keep them at third and long or fourth and long. Banks finds some space on the left. Gains a couple there. So Shawnee now with a fourth and about six, depending on where they put this ball down. Put it about 31, fourth so. And seven. Six and, yeah, seven. Titans gotta, gotta get a stop here. Did a heck of a job to get him fourth and long. Can't can't let them get there. You know, again, this if, if they do, it's another couple, two, three minutes off the clock. Beery rolls right. Beery might just run this one. He needs the 24, and he has it for the Dales Concrete first down. And Beery has done a nice job managing this game for Shawnee. He's thrown the ball when he's had to, but he's kept the ball on the ground. Yeah very well and used those legs to pick up big yardage. Yeah, and that was a design rollout run all time. They only had one guy out in, and as a, as a pass catcher, most of everybody else was like back for run support. That was a design rollout run for him all the way. And I tell you, like you said, he can, he can get it now, man. He can get outside and get going. With the Dales concrete first down, the Indians get up to the 21-yard line, and they're going to take another timeout. That's going to be their second timeout, just one remaining as we step aside. 5.36 to go, fourth quarter. Shawnee on top, 14-7. To
Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And as we come back, the Titans take their first time out of the half. So we'll keep it here. Yeah, I just this is just huge, huge, huge for the Titans. They can't give up more points to have any shot, at least tying this up in regulation and, and maybe forcing it to overtime or, you know, maybe luck get an onside kick or something to uh, come away with maybe a chance to win this game, but they cannot let Shawnee score here a little, uh, any any points, and um, they got to not, I think this is a huge down right here, this first down, not to give up four, five, six yards. You know, if they got to keep them behind the sticks, make it second and long, third and long, force them to become passing a passing team and then find out where number five Chase Berry has been because he uh, has been shredding the Titans and, and not only the Titans but the whole WBL because he is a pretty special athlete. So Shawnee with a first and 10 from the 21 yard line. Shawnee with one timeout. Ottawa Glandorf with two. I'm sure they didn't want to burn a timeout right there after a Shawnee clock stoppage. But here is Banks in motion. Oh, and great. Just Good run shot. this one up the middle. Yoder was there to make a play. And uh, Justice Pope. Good job. And it's a loss of one. Second down, 11. The Titans make me look like I actually know what I'm talking about That's there. That's right. <laughs> Evan, I'm telling you. <laughs> if only life could be this easy. <laughs> Second 11, Beery alone in the backfield. Now he sends Banks in motion. Beery keeps this one. Trying to find some space in the middle of the field, but... Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. So third and 11 now for the Indians. Barry kind of limps off a little bit, like limping there. Limps over to Coach Cooper to get the play. So maybe they're just kind of playing this. We'll see if uh, they call the quarterback draw here. From here, it would be about a 39-yard field goal. Beery and shotgun. Two wide receivers out to the left. Looks to pass, throws right down the seam, and it's caught. First down for the Indians. That one caught by Carter Fay. And that felt like a play that they knew was going to work. They yeah. took the snap and threw right. it right to Faye, who was wide open yeah. down the seam. And I think part of that is, is Titans subbed in a linebacker late there. Um, and um, the linebackers have been, those first two plays were coming up and making plays and just flying. Uh, Shawnee took advantage of the Titans' aggressiveness and ran a, a tight end right down the seam. And, and Barry made a great throw. Beery grabs the high snap with one hand. He's trying to find the end zone, oh, stays wow. on his feet, and he gets in with the second effort. Chase Beery with the touchdown run from three yards out. Great effort, individual effort. He ran through probably three tackles, would-be tacklers there to get in the end zone. Kind of we touched on it earlier. He's a tough man to bring down. He doesn't usually go down on the first contact, and he usually falls forward. He's had himself a heck of a night. His second touchdown run of the night. And the PAT upcoming for Shawnee. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. And it is good. 3.36 to go. It's 21 to 7. Shawnee on top on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. We'll be right back with more on WOSN after this. Three thirty-six to go here in regulation at Shawnee. The Indians lead this one 21-7 over the Ottawa Glandorf Titans, and the Titans will return this one to the left side. It's returned by Grant Schrader. 
Schrader returns it up to the, well, we'll see where they put it down. I thought it was the 30. 30. Yeah, I think so. Here we go, 30 yard line. So the Titans with two timeouts and 3.39 on the clock need to get two scores to get back into this one. And they're without their starting quarterback and really their backup quarterback is third string quarterback and really <laughs> just a, a running guy, <laughs> Mormon, the quarterback right now. Mormon pitches this one out. They're going to try to throw it back to him. It's caught and a nice hit. A flag came in during that play as Mormon caught the pass. Keegan Wilson coming from his uh, cornerback kind of got off the receiver and came up and made made the hit. And they're going to call, I think, a hold on the Titans. They do indeed. So that play null and void. They'll back him up from the 28-yard line. So it should be a first and 22. There's a lot of one of those plays, a lot of things going on there, right? They had a bunch of misdirections and a throwback and great rig by uh, Keegan Wilson there to come up and make a heck of a hit. Three wide receivers split out to the right side. Mormon's going to have to start throwing some passes, I believe. Yep. Mormon throws this one over the middle, and it's caught. A nice hit after the catch, but yeah. good job. Way Holding to on to that football by Ryan Ross. Ryan Ross. Yeah, good job by Ryan Ross to come away with that one. And he got kind of stuck in the ribs there, and he kind of he goes off trying to get his bearings straight. Good job by Landon Mormon to make a nice pass. He put that right on the money. Nice spiral. Titans are going to need more from that. Get back in this game. Second down, 10. Clock still ticking. It's at 245. Mormon looking to the right side, still looking, steps up, now thinks about running, ends up picking up positive yardage. He stays in bounds. Yeah, he uh, did a heck of a job to get two yards, but he, <laughs> he ran about 40 to get two. And ran about 30 seconds off the clock. Give him credit. He's trying to make a play. He's trying to help his team out. You know, he's holding the ball, holding the ball, trying to get it, waiting until the receiver get open. He's doing his part. And then after he got to the numbers, he tucked it and ran up the sideline. Good piece, of, you know, that just like what a quarterback's supposed to do. He's, he's trying, trying to make a play for the Titans. Under two minutes to play. Third down, eight. Mormon steps up. Now runs, has plenty of... Space. He gets the Dales concrete first down and runs out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Yeah, and, and he did a great job there in realizing that, hey, it kind of like the Red Sea parted. It, it, the middle got a wide open, and he just seen that and tucked it and took off running. He, he ran, he shot out of a cannon, ran hard, got 15 good positive yards. Good job by Landon. Quick score and maybe an onside kick recovery and Titans might have a shot here, but they got to score quickly with some time left. Three wide receivers split out to the left side. Mormon keeps this one and gets up field for two. Great play by Carter Fay to shed the blocker and dive to make that tackle. Doesn't look like the Titans are going to use it either of those last two timeouts. And they're taking their time getting back to the huddle. And maybe they have to go like this to make sure everybody's in the right spot. And, you know. And they've got a, quite a few injuries. Maybe yeah. they're kind of right. trying to prevent any more damage. Mormon. Rolling out to the left side. Pulls it down. Some space to run. Ooh, and he's hit that's got to be a penalty. Late, but oh, man, that was he was past the red and got shoved. Referees have not really thrown the flag on late hits tonight. Right. Good piece of uh, sportsmanship by the couple of the Shawnee guys. 
I went over and helped him up and patted him on the back and double checked to see if he's okay. That, you know, that's what high school sports are about, the sportsmanship. But I think that was a late hit out of bounds that was missed. So it brings up third down five, 52 on the clock. It stops with the play going out of bounds. Ball right at midfield. Mormon rolling right this time. He throws, and that might have been intercepted, and yes, it is. is. Intercepted Noonan. by Zach Noonan. It's kind of a 50-50 ball, and that's kind of how it went for the Titans. I think Shawnee's got all the 50-50 balls all night tonight, and great play by Zach Noonan to read that and jump in front of the receiver to, to get that inter interception. So 46 seconds on the clock. Shawnee with a timeout. Titans with a timeout. Shawnee, or two timeouts, excuse me. Shawnee looks like they'll be in victory formation as they put Keegan Wilson back very deep. Take the snap, take the knee. And depending on when this play clock starts, they will have to snap the ball one more time. I want to thank our sponsors again here this game lima chevrolet cadillac sponsoring your pregame and halftime show our scoreboard sponsor tonight was structure outdoor ohio our first down sponsor was dale's concrete and our first call of the quarter sponsor was citizens national bank shawnee scored 21 unanswered gonna, they're sending a guy off So Something, I don't know, mouthpiece, uh, head equipment issue, I don't know. I think it, uh, they have chin placed strap, a little bit of an yeah. emphasis on yes, wearing your equipment properly this right. year. But either way, Shawnee will be able to take a knee here, and assuming Coach Schreiner doesn't take a timeout, that will do it for this game. And Scott Mag, Shawnee, yeah. gets their second win of the season and a, a pretty good effort as they were down 7 nothing in this game and ended up winning... 21 uh, seven with 21 straight points yeah right and, and they did it what they you know their bread and butter is running the football and they've they uh, were able to get outside and get their athletes in space and make some positive plays and you know after a while I think that fourth quarter they just kind of kind of wore on the Titans and they weren't able to to hang in there I believe absolutely so again your final score here at Shawnee, it's 21 to 7. Shawnee wins. We want to thank the Shawnee Athletic Department for their hospitality tonight. And as always, we want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Football on WOSN. For Scott Mag, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.